to start the recording then. Uh, oh, just a second, sure, she's coming back. And I will change the settings of this um, room just so they, they are not moderated. I think this was the default. Let's wait for sure to come back. And now we are recording. <laughs> okay. Um, okay, I created a, also a wiki page. We, I will put the recordings there, the links to, to where the recordings will be. Then other, <clears throat> other stuff I added to the pad is like uh, the proposal that we sent to Zcash that is public in the forum, and then the milestones that Nick created uh, with uh, milestones. And then we have a board for each milestone that is just the board filtered by the milestone, no? just to check the progress in the common board. Uh, we also need to look at what, what would be a release date for the 0 0.0.1. .0 Maybe Nick already has an idea, but um, that's something to discuss and I to add it there to the pad. The timeline for this project is starting this week and ending in October of next year. And the idea for the reports is each time we finish a milestone, we send a report. And I think it would be a good idea that's something to check with everybody here to have this public. No, Nick, you were before sending stuff to the to our project mailing list. It could be sending there and also publish it in the forum. Maybe publish it in the in the Zcash forum would be a good idea for people to to keep track of what's happening. Um, but that's something, yeah, for everybody to decide. No. Um, then I added the stakeholders that is mostly like the people from the network team. Plus, uh, then it would be great if we are recording this to also invite uh, developers that may be, may be interested, like uh, the people that we talked about with a few weeks ago that are doing stuff in Europe, and also Zcash developers. No, This is a place where people can come and discuss um, in each yeah. scene what's going on. So I, I know that Al know that has now. sent out a doodle to some of the Zcash developers. Oh. So yeah. with any okay. luck, we can have a meeting scheduled for like a first meetup with them. That'd if somebody great. is on speaker, could you please move to headphones? Oh, that's a lot of feedback. <laughs> maybe, maybe with me. Uh, I'm, although I have headphones, I'm not sure. Um, yes, that's great. I will check with Al because I didn't see that. Uh, that would be awesome. Yeah, and invite them here. And also, uh, I will at some point, if we discuss anything about how to put, put documentation online for this, uh, invite Duncan so we, we have some perspective on developer experience there. Um, mostly they, they are thoughts about it, no? That's something I added there to the stakeholders. Then I also added the work board that this is just the Kanban filtered by uh, the sponsor 119, that is the sponsor number for this project. Okay. That's uh, what I'm adding to the pad about information about this project. Then the agenda, the stuff we added for today, one is adding on the meeting schedule on how we are going to co coordinate these meetings. Um, we already agree on recording. We already agree on public meetings. Um, I think this meeting should be every two weeks. Any other idea? Let's start it like that and reconsider like after a month or two. We need to be a little bit aware of if we want to do this very public focus that we need to make sure that our other meetings don't end up taking, um, that we don't spend too much time on the ID things in the other meetings, if that makes sense, because otherwise there's going to be a weird gap in, in what we talk about. You mean in the weekly meetings? Uh, like in both our Thursday meetings and in our Monday meetings. Yeah, I'm, I'm also confused about why would we meet differently for RT. I didn't understand that either. Uh, it might be because we wanted a video um, record of stuff, unlike we get on Monday. It might be because we are thinking of this as being separate from as being a sp separate sponsor type thing as opposed to so the, in the same way that we have regular sponsor 61 meetings for example uh, I have, I have a, I, what, what i was thinking about these meetings as like two seconds I mean, um 
First, yes, like a place where only art can be discussed, allow other people that are only interested in art to attend, that maybe not want, they don't want to go to the weekly, um, weekly networking meetings where people, where people are discussing reviews and triage and other things. And also the other one meetings that you have, the sinks are like closed. <laughs> so this one is a place where we can have the public meeting and other uh, stakeholders, developers can, can participate too. Um, that's one thing. Um, another thing is mostly I was uh, treating this like other, other sponsor projects so we can move along uh, and see the, the track, tracking this, this project specifically. I think there is a good argument to be made in trying to separate this for some of our other things. It might have a bigger price for us in terms of that we have one more meeting every two weeks. But I think the argument that Gaba has with that the rest of our meetings are very, they're very internal, even though they are, one of them is happening on IRC and so on. It's some pretty boring processes for external contributors to get involved with and things like that. We could make it more interesting. And also, your, your IRC is not like, yeah, so accessible for many people. Maybe people are better to just uh, type in a thing on their browser and getting into this meeting specifically for that. And also, the IRC ones could be very short, and that's fine, you know, they are specific mm. for any, anything networking related. And any decisions that are like related on how we are building RT could be in this public meeting. Voice will, will make it better and faster to make uh, discussions and agreements. Um, that's my other side about it. Any other um, thing, people? Um, I, I'm 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 not going, going to argue. I think uh, I think it's fine for now. We're going to try it. I still have my doubts, but it's fine. We can evaluate. We're pretty good at doing that historically, and uh, especially yeah. in the recent months of the network team we've been good at uh, at uh, shutting down things that we think are not necessary yeah the, the the only thing i worried is really is that is the overlap between tor.git and rt like this is the tor network problem space and and it doesn't make sense for me to separate but you know we'll try it's fine yeah one thing to figure out is at what sort of meeting it would be right to talk about like dividing up a time between tor c tor and rd or dividing up time or like whether to put a different sponsored activity what to what extent we can get that other sponsored activity to be part of rd hmm. is that the sort of thing we would talk about here or on monday or some other venue like like if we do a sponsor 61 in rt for example that's what you're saying yes where would we be talking about should we do sponsor 61 in rd I mean, right now, since Mike didn't show up, we can't really, you know, do it here. I'll ping Mike on IRC. Yeah, I already ping him too. Um, yeah, we can we can discuss that with Mike, like when we discuss the sponsor sixty one stuff. So this is usually on Mondays. Uh, that's fine. There's a lot of other stuff to discuss here, so it's totally, uh, it's totally fine. Um, yes. Okay. So the first milestone is the 0 0.01, uh, and I mostly see Nick that you have been working on testing, um, but we have a bunch of stuff added here that we need to discuss. Um, yes, um, I've um, I've been working on testing, but mostly on refactoring to get the testing together. Uh, I don't want to wind up in the same position that we did with CTOR, where most of our code is untestable. And so we decide later on that we want to write tests and we realize we can't do that without refactoring the code. I want to have the code factored for testing from the beginning. And it's easier to do that because of modular isolation stuff in a higher level language like Rust than it is in C. So I've just been refactoring things one at a time. There's more testing, refactoring to be done there. And um, if, if anybody wants to talk about testing strategy, that's cool. But in our last meeting, we talked about what people were interested in working on. Should we talk about that or should we like? Yeah, yes, I was going to say that actually, before getting into the agenda for the other items, I would like to clarify something that it seems that you discussed on, on the Thursday 
there's Thursday things for the team, and it's something I was talking with Nick about. And how do we handle it split between RT and the other sponsors? No, there's other projects, and there will be more one more project uh, coming up here in the next in the next month. Um, two things. Uh, right now for RT, we have uh, Nick full time, and then we want everybody in the team, including Shim, <laughs> to be doing RT stuff. Uh, and getting up to speed to anything related with RT. The issue we have right now is that we have other sponsors that require a lot of time from the rest of the team. We have David, a um, lot of the time in Sponsor 61, George, some of the time in Sponsor 61. Alex has to be available for the, anything of a Sponsor 30. And there's one more project coming for like the the China project in the next month that also requires some time from, from Alex. Um, so the idea would be to have like a priority those sponsors for any work, but then like manage your work the way you can to also do some artist stuff. Um, that would be that would be one thing. Um, what I was going to say. Uh, and the other thing that we were talking about is discussing with like the specific places that you are working on in the other projects about what can be done in RT and what cannot be done. That's not something I can <laughs> I can say anything about because I have no idea, but that's a discussion for each project, what things can be uh, get on into, into RT, you know? Uh, there's other projects coming that we may be able to get into the RT timeline mostly at the end uh, of those projects. So this is something to consider when we are looking at when we do um, the work for the other projects. So we do it in RT. So that's something related to uh, the last stuff you discussed, no? Um, so this is to discuss with Mike and other people, um, also the PT work, and also the other stuff like that. Do people have any thoughts about it? Like on what we want to do, or any questions or something? Any, I don't know, any doubt or um, I have written a list down of some things that I was a little bit interested in in terms of some things that has been bothering me a bit with Tor over the past few years um, that I was hoping we could get in early in with Artie. Um, I don't know if that's relevant now or if that is something to be said later. It's related to the items that are on the list here. Yeah, we can we can look at when we start doing the the list. Okay. Um, uh, um, I I do have a point here. It's I don't know. It's difficult to to just uh, explain, but um, I think. It's, it's unclear in my head also, but I think like we as network team, once RT kicks off, that we do need a very, very strong policy in some ways that what is acceptable to go in toward that good and what it's not. And I think right now it's very blurry, uh, especially towards sponsor. So I can talk to Mike about sponsor 61, but uh, in the end, there is needs, in my opinion, I think there needs to be a decision on that. <clears throat> On a broader level of like what goes in, what goes not. I mean, it's not my decision to decide what goes in toward and get in the end. Uh, I can advise, but uh, yeah, I totally so, agree. Yeah. So, so it's very difficult to to draw a line here without very strong, strong guidelines or policy, basically. Yeah, yeah, we need some guidelines. I totally agree. That would be ideal to have a specific guidelines that we can refer to. Yeah, to other projects and, and also to developers. Now, what is included and what not? How. Like and at some point we talk, um, Nick. We talk about a timeline for like uh, deprecating. Um, yes, we have that. We're we can go in a position where we say no new unsponsored client features in Tor .git. We don't have the freedom to turn down all sponsored client features in Tor .git yet. Um, until at the point where we can start delivering RD when that's needed, we can. Um, we can say, you know, beyond, um, but we're still very early in any kind of deprecation timeline here because we don't even have a 
officially stable recommended RD release yet? I wrote down some notes about this topic last night um, at my old job. We had a project where we were trying to switch from one programming language to another for a, a very big piece of infrastructure. Mm -hmm. And it um, it failed miserably when I uh, started working for Tor and left the organization. That was a little bit sad. Um, but one of the things, like David and I had talked a little bit about this thing with the 61 and so on. One strategy we could have is that we have an like for the network upgrades that we need to do, we must be doing things in C, of course, because we're not targeting relay support and directory authority support and stuff like that in RD yet. Um, but we could, for all client things, have an RD first policy, like everything has to go into RD first. And then we evaluate based on the features that goes into RD, what needs to be backported into Tor. Um, that way we will be developing things in RD, and it can be for technical reasons we want to backport it. It can be for sponsor reasons we want to port it back to Tor. It can be for a ton of different reasons. Mm. But the idea is we test it and like we get some experience with it in RD first, and then we can do the C implementation afterwards, potentially together, potentially someone else. Uh, I don't know if that makes sense. I think that does make sense. We might be not be able to get there right away, but I do think that um, that like once once we're at a position where we can um, actually dog food already and do our appropriate testing on already, like once already has the appropriate module to support whatever client feature we're talking about developing, then it does make sense to do it in already first. What about if we um, we create a ticket and we start this draft there and discussing and um, and we bring it back in the next meeting and kind of uh, make a final okay action ticket to come up with I'm I'm using all caps action to mean something to do after the meeting perfect thank you yeah ticket to yeah. come up with um, policy for current stage of C this non primary ness, which is not really an English word, but it's all I can think of. Yeah. Um, so before we get into documentation, I want to Maybe just talk about reporting and uh, not, not documentation into like uh, next development steps. I'd, I'd like to maybe talk about the reporting and website stuff. Um, Alex, I gather that you grabbed a redirect because that's all that the um, so we have already .org and for now it just redirects to the uh, Git repository. It oh, doesn't it, do no. anything yet. Okay, so what do we, can we do anything to make that work? Um, I'm going to ask the sysadmins about that. I actually must admit I thought it worked, but uh, maybe okay. they assume yeah. that we just need the pages thing now, and that should be working. There's just no content there yet. Uh, um, can what what pages would that thing would that be? Um, that would be uh, TPO pages, uh, tpo.pages.torproject.net slash uh, core slash RD, I think. All right. Okay. I need to that. that before, I'm, uh, before you post it anywhere. All right. Yeah, if you can. So, that, so I think we have an action for um, figure out where we can put documentation. Do you mean the Rust docs that are already existing, or do you mean the new web page that I started working on yesterday? Um, I, I mean the new web page. I mean all of those readmes and other things that I wrote yes. in the repository. I mean links to the repository, and I mean, um, and I'm thinking that if it's if it's well formatted and looks good, we could also use that for reports. So that we've got our reports permanently in some kind of Git thing, and yeah. we can post links on the forum and, or add on. Tor dev. If we do it, if we do it with something that, some kind of authorship system that accepts Markdown, 
we can post the reports both there and in the forums. The notes I have, I started on this pretty late last night with the, because there were some issues with GitLab CI. Um, but the notes I have is that there should be a news functionality and everything should be marked down and it should be possible also to write arbitrary documents there and there should be links to the technical documents that we have from Rustock. That's what we have right now, right? We don't have anything else. Excellent. Yeah, I mean, uh, I'm, so I'm, I'm going to put myself for the action to open the ticket for the first one. I'm going to put you for the actions for where are we supposed to be putting all of this? Yeah, I'm already on that this Great. week, so it's, it's perfectly fine. Cool. So when we were talking about reports to the forum and stuff like that, you want to have everything there then? Yeah. OK. Then we also have the history and so on. That's much nicer to work with. OK. OK. And I'm going to do myself for like writing a um, kickoff post for the blog. Yeah. Excellent. That will be the first blog post, and that's very good. That'll be awesome. Yeah, that probably be yeah that that probably that one will probably go on the Tor blog and on the RD blog, and or one of the other ones that exists. All right. Um. Okay. Sounds good. Uh, perfect. Okay, so that's the um, documentation. We talk about about stakeholders. Uh, it'd be great for, for the next meeting. We all, we like get a public invite for other developers, so I can I can start looking at that. And maybe in the in the blog post is a place to to um, to to outreach to. So let's start with the, this other agenda we have here. No, uh, we talk about testing. I'm not sure if you have anything else about testing. Um, I think we're going to wind up rewriting a lot of the code that I, or substantially revising a lot of the code that I have already, even the stuff that is te substantially tested. And we have to figure out the right time frame to do it on. I'm hoping that we wind up with more and more testing over the course of the releases. Right now, we're actually at about 77% coverage overall. I'd I want to get up to 80 by the time we do our, our releases and stuff. There's a few modules that just aren't that just have bad testing, and they're going to keep having bad testing unless we either rewrite them a lot or refactor a lot or um, come up with some good ideas. But I think that's the sort of thing that I would want a Rust a person with more Rust experience to kind of give me some options on. Uh, what else? Uh, just a second. Kushal is asking something in, in the chat. I didn't see it before. Uh, I'm planning. So we have a ticket to actually publish things, to publish 000 of everything, and that'll grab the names. Um, I'm hoping that I can find. I could just do it, or I could try to find somebody with a little Rust experience to uh, walk me through it. Uh, Kushal, have you published crates before? Yes, you can hear me. Excellent. Um, then let's do. Um, has anybody else published rates before? Okay, if nobody else has published crates before, then I will ask um, Kushal, how about after this meeting, we try to work out a time that we can get together and like upload version 000 of everything. Does that sound good? Perfect. Thank you. And oh, I'm sorry, I kind of recruited you there. I hope you're OK with doing this. If not, like, just, just let me know. A meeting style I, is already I, working. I, Yay. I came here to be recruited, so yeah. Awesome. Perfect. I just hey, put... And Jim, you're saying that you're interested in testing and refactoring. Uh, yeah, I think that would be probably a good way for me to get involved, since I don't know as much about the about Tor itself. I have a, a little bit of Rust experience. Hmm. Awesome. So, okay, that's about testing. Development infra. Here, Alex, if you want to. I'm really interested that, in that one for a lot of reasons. And one of them came up when I spoke with Gaba yesterday. We have so many things that would be really nice to get right from the beginning with this. Also, um, um, 
get like reproducible builds also having some kind of tools to detect um, how much memory we use for different things, like how much do we use for bootstrap, how much do we use for fetching an onion service, how do now, all these things we have no clue about in uh, Tor. And every time we have a new grant, it fluctuates a lot because we uh, because it's hard for us to measure and it, and it is pretty hard in our grants to do these kind of things. Um, I did wonder if we also want to include things in this to uh, make it easier for the browser team in the future to think in reproducibility of the builds and having, um, for example, depth packages available for more easy access Sorry, depth, for depth packages, Debian packages. Oh, Debian or, packages. Yeah. Hmm. Hmm. It's not high priority. I was just thinking maybe all of these things to make it as uh, easy as possible, also for the non-Rust part of our community to get uh, to get going once we have something for people to play around with. Yeah, we don't. Um, we have FFI in our roadmap, but we don't have FFI in our roadmap for zero zero zero, or for zero zero one. I uh, I don't think I care that much about FFI. And, well, and that that's... would be what we would have for that. Would, that would be what we do for non-Rust users to use it. Oh, I'm. Uh, what I meant was that I think with RD right now we're going to attract the Rust developer community, and they know how to use the Rust tools, like install things mm -hmm. and stuff like that. Whereas I think maybe the community we already ah. have that knows Tor, they might have a more uh, old school approach to to getting things. So okay. uh, it, it's not so much for the code wise; it's more about being able to execute the binary I see. and getting the binary RD on their computer. Hmm. All right. I, I've I've tried to summarize that. I think that's. I think for awesome. the near for the nearest term, it's best to focus on stuff that helps development. That's a very good point. Because um, our our focus remains like developer focused for the um most of this milestone, and anybody who's trying it now is an early adopter. Mm -hmm. Um. But I think absolutely everything with certainly stuff with release processes. With binary build processes, we should figure that out at least. We should get yes. the CI together. We already have some there, but there is definitely for uh, mobile that we need to be uh, on it. But all this stuff with development infrastructure, I'm very interested in, in that. Ah, excellent. Yeah. Perfect. And also perfect. getting things ready for um, like, yeah, having packages and making sure there's man pages and all those kind of things. That is something that just has to be done at some point. Awesome. What about the stuff about testing mechanisms for iOS and Android? Because there's something that if we want to focus this for being like a, that's for people to be able to integrate it in mobile is something we really need. How? What's your thought about it? I uh, I think I should be on that and try to figure something out there. <laughs> I I don't have any good solutions for it yet, but uh, that's something we'll have to figure out. Anything else about this um, before we move to the next? We have, let's see, we have continuous integration. It would be nice to have like our coverage stuff run nightly and stick the coverage output up um, somewhere in our generated documents world. I have a patch for doing uh, so that there's nice coverage analysis in each merge request, also telling you if there's a regression, but the tool that needs to run isn't supported in the stupid GitLab CI runner that we have on our infrastructure. Uh, um, so I already have a conversation with Anacat about getting that bumped to the next Debian, which is Bullseye, where it should be fixed, but it hasn't happened yet, and he's on vacation now. I okay. spoke with him about it three weeks ago or something like that. So that is part of the development infrastructure thing with CI that I want all of this to be like, uh, that we have upfront analysis about these things. Um, OK, I I have a script that does those pretty coverage outputs that shows you what's covered and what's not. Um, I, I think like it might be worthwhile just to do that on a nightly basis. But but that is this, we're using the same tool. I'm just using some GitLab integration for it. But the problem is that tool uses seccomp in a way for detecting some things. And that doesn't work in the uh, in the Docker containers that we run. OK, but, um, so what I'm, what I'm suggesting is that we we do it without the full GitLab integration just for now. And um, later on, we can add 
the uh, integration, to the VMR where integration. You, where, where do you want to run it? Oh, I see. You're saying it doesn't run at all. No, no, you, you can't. You can't run the analysis. It cannot execute uh, the code. I got it. I got it. Because it's running. Yeah. Got it. All right. Understood. Let's see. Uh, Continuous integration. Uh, on. It would be nice to have early integration testing. Is there something yeah. you or you, Shim, can help with, or? What are we thinking here, like chutney shadow kind of thing? Um. I don't much care right now. I would right now anything I figure anything is better than nothing. Cool. It would be beautiful to have Shadow. It would be beautiful to have like Chutney except it works. But <laughs> in in reality what I think you're you, they're like the best thing we want anything. Anything is better than what we have right now, right? And we want something that's stable and something that's yeah. easy to extend and so on and isn't in the way. Good. This is also a very open one. We're going to figure that one out. Um, and yeah, that's something I can help with, particularly with Shadow. That would dovetail nicely with uh, my other sponsor work. That would be awesome. I bet Rob would be really happy if uh, we use Shadow as part of the uh, of the uh, integration test suite for RD as well. Yeah. Okay. That's a lot of infrastructure to talk about, but I think it's important. Yeah. We have, uh, OK, let's uh, move to the next one. Now, I added like a few people interested in different things. Uh, and um, yes, um, I'm not sure about the edited shorts, but maybe we can figure out later. No? We and then have I think entries mm -hmm. from George and Deagle from the last meeting, where oh. we had uh, George is interested in working on guards, and Eagle A is interested in working on stream isolation. Oh, I believe yeah. the plan, please correct me if I'm wrong, uh, George or David, is that um, we're going to pair up on those, and uh, we'll try to get up to speed together, and I'll try to get you up to speed together on them. Does that sound good? Yep, that definitely works for me. Yes. When can we start on those? Is anyone free to start on one of those like next week? Like pairing up for a few hours at a time? Right. So I was actually also wondering about this. So I'm on vacation this week. I think perhaps next week I will be like catching up with things, but maybe the week after next week I can get started for sure. Hmm. Okay. Would that make sense? But I think yeah. we can, like one day, one day a week, like start like uh, like look for for pairing on specifically on that for starting, right? Okay. So and let me let me just make sure I've got like um I just want to make write this up in. Yeah. Yeah, we can uh, assign people to see this after. Awesome. Then the other thing, we, we already talked about the next point, a few things. Um, release date, um, like looking at the estimation, it seems that we should be releasing the first um, the first uh, milestone, the first version in uh, October 001. Mm -hmm. um, and Kind of, I, I put end of October, but some day in October. No? Yeah, I, I'm, I'm hoping for mid October because we're because we're starting now. But yeah, yeah. Um, so I, I wrote up a very very draft timeline in, uh, in in one of the RD things. Uh, hope just to try to basically just by adding up dates. Let me get a link. It's. Mm, I put that in the readme? Oh, maybe I put it in. 
Okay, yeah, yeah, it's right in the RD readme. So if you just go to uh, the RD readme, right? Uh, like if you just look at the page that has RD on it. This one. I, I posted it in the pad. You posted in the pad. Yeah, um, that, that'll do. If you just, it's okay. Um, if you towards towards the bottom, where where it starts to have, yeah, this. Yeah, yeah, where it says roadmap. That's just from from adding up the dates. I added a little extra time for 010 because I figured that we would hit December and nobody's good in December. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 Um, yeah, we will have some vacations too. So, yeah. But, like, I think it's an under October will be fine. Yeah. I don't think anything bad happens if we finish stuff early. Yeah. So, um, and. The first milestone is deliberately designed to give us time to do things right, to learn whatever rust we don't know. Yeah. I have a question that uh, I don't know if it's uh, sidetracking things, but let's say we go with the goal of doing RD first things for client development. Mm -hmm. And we do have some other sponsors that could benefit from having things done in RD. That means that there's going to be one track, which is our COMG sponsorship, which is this timeline we have here. But it might be there's someone sitting and working on another sponsor on something that is also going into RD. We think that is a net positive, right? I think that's something that's going to be confusing. Like, let's say S28, they say, let's try to do a, like, let's do some Rust PT stuff to prepare RD for that. That would be a net win, we think, but it would also like escalate from this timeline yeah the, the the other thing is that like we may i mean if we do other sponsors in this uh in rt we, we they need to know or we need to know that like the the first time that people can use it is in, in september to, of next year no this is the initial stable release all oh, right 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 but it's also i guess it's just a nice thing that we can go to the ccash people and say hey while we're doing this project, we have also done these things, um, yeah, not for, for your money, maybe, but for some other yeah. money if we happen to. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Excellent. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that's perfect. That's a bonus for sure. OK, the other thing I have here in the list is how to do, like we we talked with Nick about doing some pair programming to get people up to speed and doing some features together with, with Nick. And also code reviews, no? That's the other thing that I think everybody should should be involved. And I'm I'm not sure if Shuga, uh, she, Mankusha, you also wants to be considered for any code review. Uh, but yeah, this is something we should have a list of who who can do code reviews. I want to at least join in the pair programming sessions. If there is any list of timings, like uh, like possible times, like when people will be doing pair programming. Or things I next year to keep my things open, and I was waiting for a long time, like over a couple of years, to wait for a chance like this. And it was really helpful. So yes, and also code reviews and anything related to this. Awesome. I think code review wise, um, when we talked about it um, the last time on the tenth, people felt that we weren't ready for my code to get blocked on um the other on other other folks here just but that we should look for opportunities to go back and review stuff as people start working on it to understand why is this that way people also felt that like we weren't ready to at people's current levels of Rust familiarity to go and review existing modules and make suggestions. But I would love it when, as soon as people feel they can to do and that. Also, and so maybe not all the merges, all the patches, all the things you're sending may, may be reviewed by anybody, but you can have a criteria and think, oh, okay, this is something that maybe, I don't know, maybe Kusha can review yeah. or maybe can review. I, 
I think maybe it would be wise not to go, not to do what we do on Tor.Git right now, where we do random shuffle of who gets to review what. I think that would be a terrible mistake, especially because I think it would hinder a lot of productivity from from Nick if, if we need to review his things uh, every single time. Um, but I do think maybe it would be a wise, like in practice right now, Nick is the person who has the most overview of the project. Um, I think maybe one thing we could do is that Nick also delegate some of these things to some of some of us who are around. Like, hey, are you up for reviewing this thing? This is something that I don't, not that you don't care for it, but it's something that I don't necessarily have to review um, so that it becomes, so that we don't uh, block the very good stream of changes that are happening right now. But at the same time, we slowly ramp up uh, our ability to review things. Yeah, that, that would make sense. I'd be happy to, Delegate stuff, um, you know. And you're okay with doing that? Like, it, it will be just asking us an IRC, like, hey, can you take this one? And then, uh, like, I, we I would get it just, done as soon as possible. I would just assign it to you, one of you for review. Okay, let's. Uh, let's I would just change the way. reviewer on, on GitLab because that's about what I can handle. So we continue having the bot assign every MR to you for now, and then you will manually reassign things. Right. If you sounds good. Perfect. Uh, do we have anything else for this meeting? Um, I think we have a big follow-up to talk with Mike about uh, how we incorporated 61 into all of this. Um, but I guess that's something we can do on ERC. Yeah. And just like everybody's okay with this time, like before our hands, no? Absolutely. I much prefer that it's right up to the next meeting than it's uh, than there is an hour in between. Okay. And even for me, I can attend this one much better than secure conferences. Sorry, I think have a hard time understanding. I can attend at this hour. This is far better. Perfect. Perfect. That's awesome. Thank you. Oh, uh, awesome. And it will be recorded. Perfect. Um, okay, then we're fine. Next meeting in two weeks. Awesome, folks. Thank you so much. Thank you. See you on uh, IRC. Bye bye. Bye.